All right, what is going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. And today, I want to quickly fill you guys in on the details for two very, very good Dokkan Awakenings that are coming to Global later next week. And of course, I'm talking about this AGL pan here, as well as this AGL Hyper Meta Rildo. And both of these units will be available on the AGL type banner, which is also coming back to global for the first time in a super, super long time. In fact, I believe the last time we saw this banner on global was during the 300 million download celebration, which was back in September of last year. So it's been at least like seven or eight months since we last got it. And believe it or not, I actually feel like this banner might be worth a couple of multis depending on which units you're missing and of course what your Dragonstone situation looks like. So we'll get to that in a second but let's go back to the pan first and start with her details. Oh by the way for anybody that doesn't know she Dokken Awakens from this AGL pan right here and after her Dokken Awakening her leader skill will be Super AGL types, key plus 4, HP attack and defense, plus 120%. And you might have noticed that this is actually a better leader skill than the AGL Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. I mean, at least until he gets an Extreme Z Awakening, which I feel like is not going to be for a while. I could be wrong, it could happen literally next month on JP, but I personally feel like the game is just not ready for the OG 120 leads to get Extreme Z Awakening. So I feel like it's at least six to 12 months away, maybe longer, and there's still a lot of other units that will be getting Extreme Z Awakenings for before those 120 leads. Um, Cause like a lot of those 120 leads are still really good, right? Like Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, obviously, you know, he's aged a little bit, but he's still very solid. Super Saiyan 4 Goku, the STR one, hits extremely, extremely hard even today on a 170% team. Um, Fizz Cooler, still a monster. Uh, Kid Buu still hits really hard even though his Link's kind of garbage, but you know, Extreme Z Awakening is not, is not gonna help that. Uh, Super Saiyan 3 Broly actually sh could benefit from an Extreme Z Awakening, mainly for that, for that you know, defense part, but he still hits really hard as well. So um, anyways, <laughs> random tangent, not related to the pan but I feel like 120 leads are probably not getting Extreme Z Awakenings anytime soon. But she has a very, very good leader skill, man. Key plus four, HP attack and defense plus 120%. I can see that being super useful on Battlefield, um, you know, as like a secondary leader skill for a super AGL team. And her super attack causes supreme damage and raises allies attack by 25% for two turns. So usually it's one turn, but she raises for two turns which I believe means that not only are the allies on her rotation getting that attack boost, but the units on the next rotation will also be getting that 25% attack boost, which is super, super useful. And her passive is AGL types key plus three, so all AGL types, super and extreme, and an additional attack and defense plus 50% for super AGL types. So basically she's gonna be the best possible support unit for any super AGL unit. Um, for example, the brand new LR Gumku or Spirit Bomb Absorbed Goku that just dropped on Global. And uh, if you guys were lucky enough to pull him, then she is going to make him even more of a monster than he already is on like a Goku's family team, for example, or I guess like a super AGL team if you want, but especially Goku's family under 170% leads, she's going to make him hit that much harder than he already does, right? So if you guys did pull him, then run them together and uh, you're gonna have a good time. I mean, I personally can't do it because as you guys know, did not pull him in over a thousand stones, but uh, it's okay, you know, it happens. I'm over it, it's all good. Oh, also, she's gonna be a great support for uh, AGL LR Gohan as well, who I also didn't pull in like 3000 stones. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, so amazing support right there. And she also randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, AGL excluded, to AGL key spheres. And she gets attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained. So, what this means is that not only is she just an amazing support unit for super AGL types, she also can do a lot of damage and tank really well for herself, 
by getting this, um, you know, with this nuking passive portion. So let's say she gets, you know, 10 key spheres. I mean, that's a bit much, but let's say 10, right? 10, because she also changes key spheres. So let's say she gets 10, that's 200% attack and defense in addition to this 50%, which she also gets for herself. So 250% attack and defense. But let's say we're a little bit more reasonable and she gets like seven key spheres, right? Seven times 20%, that's still 140%. And then you add the 50%, that's 190%. She's gonna be easily doing one over a million, 1.5 mil, maybe closer to two million. Um, I've seen her get up to over 4 million attack, all right? So her damage potential is very high. Uh, she also gets a defense too, so she can actually tank really well, given a certain amount of orbs. Um, so, I mean, there's no downside to this unit, man. It's really freaking good. Just like the uh, Int Kid Gohan and the Int Scouter Vegeta that we got from, uh, from the Int Banner, obviously. Uh, very similar unit. They work very similarly. And those guys were monsters, and she is a monster as well. I mean, she's got she's got it all, man. She's got the support, but she can also handle herself, and that she's got a great leader skill too. So that's why I said, man, these Dokken Awakenings are awesome. They really are. Okay, links are uh, on the family, same lineage, Battlefield Diva, GT, Shocking Speed, Innocence, and Shattering the Limit. Unfortunately, no fierce battle. I didn't really expect it, but it would have been nice. And the uh, categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Dragon Ball Seekers, Goku's Family, and Youth. And as far as how you can get her, of course, she is available on the AGL type banner. But if you guys have a lot of blue coins, you can also buy her from the Baba Shop for 300 blue coins. Which uh, seems a little bit steep, but honestly, I feel like she's kind of worth it, man, for just how good her Dokken Awakening is, you know? So if you guys have the coins to spare and you don't have her, then maybe go for it. I mean, you could also buy like a bunch of Elder Kai's if you guys need to, but I feel like your coins are better spent getting a copy of her as opposed to as opposed to Kai's, but it's totally up to you, right? And actually, I do have a lot of blue coins to spare thanks to the uh, El Arkham coup double rates banner. So I might actually pick up an extra copy or maybe I might just pick up real dough because I don't know if I have real dough. Anyways, let's move on to Rildo, speaking of him, and his leader skill is Extreme AGL Key plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 120%, so Pan is for Super AGL, he's for Extreme AGL, and his Super Attack is uh, greatly raises Attack and Defense for one turn and causes Supreme Damage to enemy and seals Super Attack. So he doesn't boost the uh, rotation, but he gives himself a 50% attack and defense boost for one turn and uh, he also will seal enemy super attack which uh, is pretty useful on events where you can seal the enemy super attack like super battle road for example and his passive is AGL type ski plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% for extreme AGL types and he also randomly changes key spheres of a certain type AGL excluded to AGL key spheres attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained so as you can see, works very similarly to the pan, except for extreme versus super here. And also instead of uh, raising attack for allies for, tw um, for two turns, he instead gives himself attack defense plus 50% for one turn. And uh, that's the real though for you guys. Uh, links are loyalty, thirst for conquest, auto regeneration, GT, mechanical menaces, shocking speed, and shattering the limit. And categories are artificial life forms and terrifying conquerors. So uh, there you go guys, and once again, he can be purchased in the Baba Shop for 300 coins. And I don't actually know if I have a copy of him. If I don't, I'm probably gonna buy one, just because I have so many coins to spare um, after the Goku banner. And uh, yeah, that's it for these units. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about them. I think they're extremely, extremely good guys. Like. Uh, for units that were really just mainly seen as like these supports, um, to make them this good, to give them this big of an attack and defense boost for getting key spheres, uh, kind of blew my mind when I first saw it, and I'm so glad that they decided to make them as good as they are, you know? So that's the Metal Rildo, let's move on to the banner and do a quick analysis here. So as I said in the beginning of the video, I think this banner might actually be worth your stones depending on which units you're missing and stuff like that. First of all, if you're missing both of these supports, then 
I'd say go for it, man. I'd say do like two, three multis, see what happens. Don't go too crazy. Don't go too deep because we do still have the um, five year anniversary and also probably the dual Dokkan Fest between the Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku and the Majin Vegeta on the way. And uh, those banners are pretty good. So I wouldn't go too crazy, but I think two or three multis, this banner should be okay, you know? So if you're missing both of these, worth it. Also, this uh, AGL Broly, if you're missing dupes of him, he is ridiculously good too, right? For a non Dokkan Fest unit, he pretty much hits as hard as a lot of Dokkan Fest exclusive units. And uh, this Cell Jr. is not bad as well. Um, this guy has an Extreme Z Awakening. He's like, okay, you know, he's not that bad, but he's also not like super impressive in my opinion. And uh, this guy with his Extreme Z Awakening is also solid. Um, he has an Extreme Z Awakening too. He does, although we recently got it on Global. And, uh, you know, he, he's okay. He's okay, but like not overly exciting. Uh, by the way, this was the JP banner that came out when the Pan and Rildo got their Dokkan Awakening. So I assume that Global will be getting the exact same banner. So these are the featured units. Not too bad, but the more exciting part of this banner is definitely the unfeatured units. And as you can see, all the AGL LRs are unfeatured on this banner. So we got LR Kale and Khalifla, which many consider to be one of the best units in the game. I mean, recently with the five year LRs, I think in a lot of people's minds, they've been replaced by the LR Vegito, but they're still up there in like, you know, among like the top five best units in the game or something like that. And uh, we also got LR Baby, who I think is highly, highly underrated. He is uh, extremely good, in my opinion. And we also have Mighty Mask, which, you know, I know, not super exciting to a lot of people. Although, um, on JP, I think they were recently added to the Fusion category, which is kind of exciting because they do become uh, Go Tanks in their Super Attack animation. And people have told me that they do, they were added to the Fusion category recently. So that's kind of cool. And uh, also Maja Majida, who I just pulled on the uh, on the LR Goku banner. Um, I thought it was going to be the Goku. It ended up being the Vegeta. I wasn't too mad, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that exciting either, I'll be honest. Either way, though, he actually still hits stupid hard, man. I don't know if you guys have recently used Maja Majida on a 170 team, but he, this guy easily gets over 3 million attack. Um, sometimes 4 million, depending on if you have a support on rotation, especially actually if you have the Rildo on rotation, right? If you use him with the Rildo, this guy should be getting over 4 million. So he hits stupid hard still, even though he's very old. And given, you know, the fact that there's 37 unfeatured cards and four of them are going to be LRs, like, like 37 unfeatured SSRs, and four of them are LRs, that means that in that last spot, in every multi, which has a 95% chance of being a unfeatured SSR, like the guaranteed, um, you have a pretty decent chance of pulling one of these LRs, right? And of course, you can still get um, these LRs in like the non like guaranteed spot too. So uh, if you guys are missing a bunch of these LRs or you want dupes for the LRs, then I think it might be worth it to throw a couple multis at this banner. That's just my personal recommendation. It's totally up to you guys at the end of the day. And uh, that's pretty much gonna be today's video, guys. Um, I think they come out on April 29th. There you go. Okay, so April 29th in about five days from the time this video comes out. And uh, if you guys are summoning, then best of luck to you. Hopefully you guys pull some LRs as well as the supports along the way. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something in this video. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.